What up, my ESRMers? What up, my public opinion poll people? Um, super stoked you guys are on this. This is uh, this data set is really really cool. This data set is the most largest, longest, most complicated data set we've uh, created in ESRM um, over the years. So it's great. I published one little paper on it a long time ago, um, just to give people a in the public uh, a taste for it and also because we do share this with different agencies and, and folks the data from this with different agencies and folks at the time that little paper is just something to to give them a, a gross understanding but but there's so much more to, to explore with this data set and it can go we literally could have probably had the entire our entire course just use this one data set for for their projects um, so it's taking me a while to get ready I, I've been cleaning it up over the course of my um, sabbatical or at least during a few weeks of my sabbatical, um, but it still is messy. It still needs a lot of uh, a QA, QC, um, but at least a lot of the big chunks, I, I think I've, I've cleaned up the, the worst of the worst. Um, anyway, let's take a look at what this, what your data set is. Now, um, we generate this, this data comes from our ESRM um, 462, our Coastal Marine Management class every year. Uh, students, students collect this data. Um, and uh, so the poll varies. And as you'll see, there's some questions that are asked every single year, some questions that are asked most years, and then uh, the majority of the questions, uh, that's maybe about 25% or so of the questions fall into one of those two categories. And then we have about 75% um, about of the questions that sort of wink on and wink off. Um, some are asked in alternating years. Some, more typically though, it's, it's as a coastal or marine management issue burbles up. And, and you know, like an oil spill or, or Fukushima or whatever. And so, so this is a mix of questions. So every year the questions change a bit based on what the students want to survey, et cetera. So let's take a look at what the, those questions are. And so this, uh, this survey here is from uh, last year's class and last year's um, uh, decisions that the students made to, to optimize the questions for the things they were uh, most interested in. Um, now, I have surveys from every year, and of course, they, they, they change from year to year. When, when one question is asked uh, from, for more than one year, the question is asked consistently. Every once in a while, something changes. We, we might change the, you know, something that says last year to, you know, a specific year. Um, but by and large, the questions that are asked are consistently asked in the same way um, with the same response variables. Where they are not, it, it should be clearly uh, enumerated in the... Um, in the database. Um, but again, I have all of these and I can share all of these with you, the, 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 the public opinion polls from various years, so you can go back and you can double check. And note, before we get going in here, note that you can see right here, this, this, this poll is 13.4. All the, all the surveys should, all the responses in the database should note what version of the poll is used, so you can always go back and, and check and, and, and uh, the, we, we probably want to do that as far as our QA, QC, but but uh, that's where you can find out uh, which poll version it is. Okay, now our questions uh, vary. So some are like this, some are gonna fill in the blank, right? So this is gonna require you guys doing some coding and binning of the data and the responses. Um, others are more like, you know, yes, no, what do you think? Some have a range of options. Do you think it's A, B, C, D, et cetera? So most of these questions are one, pick one of these. Some though are, are choose, you know, all that apply as it were. Um, and so we can go through, and, and again, some of these guys have uh, have a have a, a, a range in which we're trying to get people's sense of. So no strong opinion, very safe. No no strong opinion, very unsafe. I just don't know, etc. Um, this is a rank question. This is the one that we've we historically have the biggest problems with. People don't necessarily fill it out correctly, um, uh, and so on and so forth. So that's what the data looks like. Again, these are face-to-face -face surveys conducted every year, primarily in uh, Los Angeles, Ventura, Santa Barbara counties, although every once in a while, occasionally one sneaks in because somebody did it in, in Orange County or something of that nature. But 99.9% .9 of the data comes from our three counties here. Okay, so let's take a look at what the data, uh, the actual data, what it looks like. So this is this is what we're talking about. So it's in a obviously in a spreadsheet. Um, we have some uh, ways to sort the data and just have unique identifiers in case we find a problem or or, or do some sorting. We can reconstruct the order of the um, polls. Now, actually, let me make this a little bit larger so you can see this a little bit better. Let me make this a little bigger for you guys. Hopefully, that's better. 
Okay. So now, um, uh, okay. So, so it's, you know, there's some unique identifier numbers. There's the poll version, right? That's the version of the, of the, um, poll that was administered. Most years it's a single number. Every once in a while we do something for the first week and try something out and then decide there's an error in, in something or, or we wanted to modify a question. And so some years there'll be, you know, 13.1 and 13.2. Um, uh, and so you'll see that in the data now. Um, okay, sorry, we'll just keep going. So then this is the student that, that did the collection. This is the date that the survey was administered on, the year for reasons that I don't really remember why. We have two years here. Once we get things cleaned up, you can drop one of these years. It was just it had something to do with, I think, how we were coding the data one year or something. Uh, the time of day that it was administered in, in a 24-hour clock. Uh, the location where this was administered. Uh, and then the city and county. Now, notice here, um, not all these guys were filled out properly, right? So so some of this in the early years, we weren't really recording that. So um, uh, generally speaking, when we didn't code this, the first year we didn't put city and county, um, uh, although we should have had county. I don't know why city wasn't in there. Uh, uh, but, um, but when we go and do this, you generally want to go back in and fill this in if you can. So this is Camarillo Oaks apartment, so we could fill this in as Camarillo and Ventura here. Um, in other cases, for example, this question here, question one, when you hear the word California, and, and here in the database, these are just abbreviations of the full questions. They're not the full text of the questions. You'd have to look at the poll for the full complete wording. But generally speaking, a blank um, should be left blank in the database uh, um, because that, that means, that doesn't mean that, that no one, that someone didn't answer it. If someone did not answer it, there'd be a zero here, meaning it was not answered. If someone did answer it, there'd be a one here, indicating that it was answered. Um, so in this case, th this question wasn't even an option in 2005, so it's blank, it's completely blank. But uh, here we go. So, so we have, uh, when you hear about California, um, you know, uh, what do you hear about? Here's the answer. If they, and again, there's always an answer column in the very first column, and that just says it, there was an answer, there was not an answer. Um, and then in this case, it would be, let me let me just scroll down here, probably make a lot more sense once I get down to where people are, um, people actually have answers, and it makes sense, so you can see it. Okay, so we'll, we'll just stay, whatever this is, 2018, okay. So, um, okay, so right here, uh, you can see that uh, this person um, answered, and this person responded with the word ocean. We have another column right here, which you will do part of our QAQC. Once we look over everything, make sure all the data is cleaned, we need to do some organizing of the data, and we need to create some standard, standardized things. So if someone said uh, uh, mountains with a lowercase m, others said mountain, right? So we need to, you need to first pull all the answers there, start sorting them, and decide amongst yourselves what are, you know, what are the, how should we, um, how should we categorize these responses, and then you'll enter a standardized uh, response based on their um, input in this column. Uh, same thing with beaches. So when you hear about beaches, you think about what. Now notice here at the at the top of the database, I've. It's not perfect because some questions cross into multiple topics, but generally speaking, I've tried to bin them by topic. Okay. And so sometimes topic is geographic, sometimes topic is thematic, and and um, obviously you guys can mix and match in your in your questions and in explorations. But uh, so this first these first two are just word associations. When I hear about X, what do I think about? Um, and then uh, uh, beaches, beaches question. So this one is how uh, often do you visit beaches in Southern California? And again, one means it was answered. Zero means it was not answered. And so because nobody answered, the, the person skipped this question, didn't answer this question, all of the responses should be blank. Here where they have answered the question, we put a zero when they did not select that option and a one when they did pick that option. Um, and so so here we, we know that this person does not go, let's, let's say this person goes more frequently than once a year, but we don't know that about this person because they didn't give us any information. So they didn't, they didn't respond at all. Um, so that's how we read this stuff. Okay, so then, so the first beach question is how often you visit beaches. Next one is have you ever avoided going to beaches because you felt uncomfortable there? Yes or no? And or unsure? 
A lot of our answers have the option to be unsure. The recreational activities you're doing at the beach. So in this case, this question was not asked this year, but this is one of our examples where folks can pick more than one. So they could potentially have picked all of these things. Um, maybe they picked um, uh, none of them. And in this case, they could also pick an option that we did not give them, in which case there'd be a one here and they would write in their response there for that activity they did at the beach. Uh, how far do they go to, how far do they drive to get to the beach? Again, they answered, this person did not answer. And this was in miles, this question is responded to in miles. And so generally speaking, this is the raw data and this is the adjusted data. So sometimes it's very, mostly it's just the same. Sometimes people say things like, you know, short distance or whatever. And you can see that here. So what was the age that you first went to the beach in this question? So this person answered it. This person answered it. This person said around one, right? So then um, this has been binned or this has been adjusted as entering it as one year old. Uh, months. Uh, this one has been entered as half a year, um, et cetera. Uh, then we have questions about beef prep, beef, beach preferences. This is one you guys probably don't need. I mean, you're welcome to look at it, but this is, we have a whole nother group just looking at beach preferences and we have another survey where we ask this. So they have additional data. These are, this data for beach preferences are only um, the subset of surveys we asked during our regular fall surveys. Um, but this basically people said, you know, do I prefer a beach with few or a lot of people with uh, a sugary sand or rocks, et cetera. Those are the beach preferences. And then we have uh, questions asked about uh, seafood and fisheries. First is when people purchase seafood, how often do they ask where it comes from? And always, occasionally, etc. Do people think that California fisheries health is better now than 50 years ago? Yes or no? Um, do, we th do people think we're taking too many fish from the ocean right now? Yes or no? Um, and uh, how often do you eat fish? Daily, weekly, monthly, etc. Uh, uh, I think the I think this question's phrase is in, is as the last over the last seven days, the last week. How many ounces of seafood have you eaten? And I think it gives you some guidance. Something like uh, you know a, a, a stack of cards is about six ounces of seafood, or whatever whatever uh, the right answer is. And so this is responded to in ounces. And then, um, then we have a series of questions that were generated basically in the wake of the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. And it was this notion of people feeling, un, um, um, feeling that seafood from some places where there was a natural disaster recently is uh, unsafe or is dangerous. And so we should avoid it. And that's one of the things that people from those areas, if, there's no, if there really is no danger to the seafood, um, is a huge problem because that can be an important economic a help to the folks that are recovering, et cetera. And so this first question is, and so, so they're all phrased the same way. Is, is food from place X safe? Yes, it's safe. I'm neutral whether it's safe. No, it's not safe or I don't know. So we asked this question about the Gulf of Mexico, Santa Barbara. We originally asked only about California, but then in the wake of the refugio oil spill in Santa Barbara County, we changed this to Santa Barbara, and seafood from uh, Santa Barbara Channel and seafood from outside the Ch Santa Barbara Channel. Is it safe to eat? Uh, seafood from Alaska, seafood from Japan. Again, in the wake of Fukushima, you see this, uh, people feel it's not safe. Uh, food from China, seafood from China, seafood from Norway, seafood from Thailand. Do you think these are safe? Next is, have you ever heard of, marine, uh, of a marine protected area? Yes or no? Um, and then this is an example of a question that's evolved over the years. So we've asked this in different ways and in different forms. So sometimes we just said, have you ever heard of it? Other times we said, say, what's your attitude towards these marine protected areas? Good, neutral, bad, uh, et cetera. Uh, and then commercial, originally we asked just about fishing regulation and we realized that after a while that mm, maybe people were confusing recreational fishing with commercial fishing. And so then we changed this in 2012 to specifically reference commercial fishing. So is commercial fishing um, regulated correctly? Are we over-regulating it? Are we regulating about the right way, under-regulating it, etc.? cetera? Uh, fishing regulation types. Have you ever heard of the notion of seasons, size, size limits, gear, et cetera, MPAs? Um, for a while, we were asking about mariculture, and these are some questions about mariculture, if we should expand our mariculture uh, offerings in California or not, um, or, or, or mariculture businesses. Um, and then what do we see as threats to fisheries? Um, 
that we, we ask this uh, consistently about threats to the coast, but for a while we were asking specifically about fish. When we asked fish, we asked about pollution, exotic species, excessive harvesting, over-harvesting, habitat destruction, ocean acidification, and warming ocean temperatures. Um, and this question is about, uh, have you heard about the following in relation to seafood? Have you just heard of any of these things? Now, this is the first question where we've actually intentionally introduced errors into the data set. And so those are, those are highlighted in red. So these are all real things um, that people could pick. Um, uh, this, is, this is the abbreviated version in, in the survey. There are actually full names in the survey. Um, but these two are not real. These are made up things. And so we do that so that when, if anybody responds that they've heard of this thing, they're either accidentally, you know, they're, they're misremembering something or they're, they're not paying attention to the survey. Uh, either way, it's a measure of error. So we can use these, these erroneous responses in calculating our response error. Okay, then we have a series of questions about specifically the Channel Islands. So uh, when was the la uh, last time you visited the Channel Islands? This was the original way we phrased it, and then we, we modified it to be consistent with some of the other things we were asking about um, in 2016. So they're very similar, but they're just a little bit different. Uh, nevertheless, because they're so different, um, we created two different response um, columns. So this will be a tricky one to analyze, but not that tricky. Um, uh, okay, and then so so that that's how often they visit. Then this question is, what were what was the last island that they visited? Um, or sorry, excuse me. No, no, this question is is uh, which islands have they visited ever? And so, um, uh, yeah, there we go. Climate change uh, is climate change a problem? This is a question we've asked every single year. Or uh, yes or no? Uh, we phrase it as is climate change a significant challenge we should be dealing with? Um, and so yes, no, et cetera. Um, uh, then again, this is one of the examples of things that winked on. There was a public uh, a, a pressure campaign for um, eliminating taxes by the oil and gas industry. And this is um, uh, this was in response. They said that people hated, hated gasoline tax. And so we asked some questions about people's knowledge of gasoline tax. And so this first one was a policy proposal in the state legislature that we should have our gasoline consumption by 2030. Um, uh, this one was that we should have, oh, so this is the same one. It's just, we, we changed the format of how people could respond to the question. Um, this one is, um, when did we last increase the gas tax and almost everybody completely had it wrong. And so this was something that, that some of the lobbyists were saying people totally knew what was going on and people totally did not know what was going on. How do you feel about exiting, uh, about our exiting the Paris Accord? Should we be building the Keystone XL pipeline? Not really a not, not that's actually one of our few not coastal questions, but it is one that um, comes up in, particularly in re regards to the refugio oil spill that spilled from a pipeline, and on the Santa Barbara coast. Uh, then um, should we uh, uh, how's our, our our cap and trade California state cap and trade uh, policy going? What do you think about that? Um, and then um, some questions about climate change. Do you think climate change might be playing a role in these various things? Uh, one is home prices in California. One is poor air quality in California. One is are, are the recent fires. Uh, in this case, this was this was um, uh, we first asked this in the wake of the Thomas fire, which happened in December of 2017. And then in subsequent years, we modified that I think to just about uh, fires, recent fires basically. Uh, this one is about the 2017 hurricanes again, or recent hurricanes, Thomas fire, uh, California drought. Uh, coastal erosion, are those being influenced by climate change in, in the public's opinions? Next, we have a series of questions about disasters. Uh, and the first is about drought. Again, uh, has the drought impacted your family? This is right where we're in the midst of our, our uh, thankfully we're not in a drought at the exact moment, but we may well be entering another one. But uh, this was when we were in the midst of this years long drought. And so how is this drought affecting you? And do you think the El Nino had an impact on the drought? Uh, and then we have some questions about hurricanes, and, and these are asked, again, in a similar way. Um, and this question was about how people perceive um, risk to us versus risk to other people. So the first question here is, um, should we have rebuilt New Orleans? And so these questions go as uh, all, we should rebuild, should, should or should have rebuilt all of New Orleans, the majority of New Orleans in the wake of Hurricane Katrina, Parts of New Orleans, none of New Orleans, or I'm unsure. 
uh, the Jersey Shore uh, in the wake of Superstorm Sandy. Uh, Houston rebuilt uh, in the wake of the giant hurricane that was one of the largest that, that came ashore uh, in um, early or in the summer of 2017. Uh, this, another hurricane whacked Key West in that same year, and so this was first introduced in 2017, and we've had other hurricanes that came and whacked uh, Key West since then. Um, Mumbai, in the result of a big uh, giant typhoon, in the wake of a big giant typhoon that hit there. Uh, Puerto Rico, in the, in the wake of Maria and actually other hurricanes that have whacked it. The Carolinas, this year there was, as we were starting our class, there was a big hurricane just making landfall in the Carolinas, so we asked that this particular year. Um, and then the Bahamas, which was a big thing last year. Uh, and so again, the idea there is, is how do people respond when, when the disaster is close to them versus far from them? And you'll see there's, you know, so some of these are fire questions. Some of these are hurricane questions, etc. cetera. Um, uh, and then questions about fires. So in this one, did, did the recent fires have a serious impact on you? Should we rebuild Ventura? Again, the same format as those hurricane questions. Should we build Santa Rosa in the wake of the 2017 firestorms that we that had in the, essentially the same time that we had during that we had the Thomas fire? Uh, the Malibu fires, um, should we rebuild? Uh, originally, there was a 2007 fire that we had, and then that was hugely devastating. And then we've obviously most recently had the Woolsey fire. And this is uh, Malibu post Woolsey. This is Paradise um, uh, post the Camp fire. Um, okay, my computer is stuck right now. Uh, okay, then um, uh, uh, nuclear disasters. So this is about, about Fukushima again. Uh, d does d did people's attitude about nuclear power? Um, uh, change after Fukushima. Um, could Fukushima happen here, um, etc. Several questions related to that. Songs is the San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station, which is our um, one of our local uh, nuclear power plants. At the time of this question, it was still operating. We've it's since been uh, decommissioned or is in the process of being decommissioned. Um, and actually was being decommissioned because it had a problem and leaked and released uh, uh, aerial radiation um, into Orange County. <clears throat> Uh, Diablo Canyon, which is obviously in San Luis Obispo County, north of us, uh, while it still is operating, it was announced um, that uh, we were going to be closing it in uh, 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 the the agency, Pacific Gas and Electric, decided they were not they will not seek a renewal and will just um, uh, uh, kill it uh, and, and, uh, and retire it in 2025. Um, and then oil spill questions, a bunch of oil spill questions. Should we be, should we expand our offshore oil drilling, continue it, et cetera, uh, reduce it? Um, could the deep water horizon, something similar happen off of the coast? What do people think? Um, how was our response to the deep, uh, the Gulf of Mexico, deep water horizon, BP oil spill? Um, was it good, bad, and different? Um, and the same question for the refugio spill that we had here, much closer to home, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, and then people recollecting the 1969 uh, Santa Barbara oil spill. Uh, we've obviously had the 50th anniversary of that. And so there were several questions related to that around the 50th anniversary that we asked to see how much it remains in the public's perception. We've pretty much finished with those questions now, but, but they were big at the time. Um, uh, attitude towards offshore drilling after that. Um, attitude towards offshore drilling after BP. Attitude towards offshore drilling after Refugio. Um, um, and then this is a, this is not a real oil spill. So this is a made up oil spill to see, again, one of those things to see if people, um, uh, respond, see how people respond, um, uh, uh, and, and measure the air of their responses. Uh, Aliso Canyon, that was a spill in, uh, the hills of, um, uh, Ventura. And uh, blame for the Refugio spill. Blame for the Gulf of Mexico. Sorry, you guys. I have to deal with that. Uh, uh, and coastal management after the 69 oil spill. Um, was, has it gotten better? Not. Um, uh, uh, this question was, we asked uh, just um, before we asked anything about the Santa Barbara oil spill, just do you remember what happened in 1969? In this case, this is, this is a correctly guessed that it was a Santa Barbara oil spill, or this is they guessed something that was wrong. Um, and so this was, again, trying to see if people could could recall this event, this massive, massive event in terms of the environmental history of our country. Um, and then um, uh, how should we be moving oil? 
uh, that we drill off Santa Barbara, uh, two different places. Should we be using ships, trucks, etc.? cetera? Uh, and then, um, what's this question? Uh, oh yeah. And then, and then the year of the Refugio oil spill, since it was huge in the news, we just asked people's thoughts. And so this is just a, this would be hard to analyze, but you could absolutely do it. But, but this is a free form response. So this requires a lot of, uh, a thought and reading them all and bidding them, um, um, consistently. questions are based on uh, some questions I've been asking since the early 90s and uh, they followed me from a bunch of different uh, schools so the first one is just do you know of a wetland within 50 miles of your house yes no and that's pretty much the one we ask now for a long time we were asking uh, we're trying to see if that was really real so we asked people to name three wetlands um, and this is one that we, if you're interested in this, we need to work on uh, binning this. Uh, it's based on where they, where they report their zip code as being, and so we double check it. Um, and then there's some some things here where I was is basically going and trying to say if people were were incorrect. So if they said they knew of a wetland, for example, but then couldn't name one, then I just uh, uh, you know said that was incorrect. So that, so this can obviously be redone, and uh, in terms of the mistakes or correct responses or whatever. Um, and then we asked, uh, so uh, have wetlands changed in the last 150 years in, in California? And if they have changed, or, or, or actually I think we, we say, uh, what are wetlands now like now versus 150 years ago? And so people could say they're either the same, they've increased, or they've decreased, or they're unsure. And then they respond, if, if you think it did decrease or increase, what's the magnitude of that change? So originally we had these categories and then they were modified to be more um, fair because this was this was not evenly distributed, um, and so we get this. The answer, uh, the correct answer, is 91% of our wetlands in California have been destroyed, at least 91% in the last 150 years. So the correct answer is de declined, and by the maximum, uh, by the largest category possible. Then we ask people to rank uh, threats to wetlands, just like I mentioned before. We have this question we haven't seen yet about coastal general coastal issues. Then we have, for a while, we're asking this about fisheries, and here's when we ask specifically about wetlands. So people can rank the number one threat, number two threat, number three th threat, et cetera. Um, and then this, these series of questions also have not been asked for a while, but they basically, uh, and this plays into this restoration issue, but um, the idea is, would you be willing to contribute something to, um, to help recover degraded wetlands in your neighborhood? You would be willing to volunteer, um, um, pay some tax dollars, etc. And uh, uh, then we say, if you were willing to contribute some tax dollars, how much would you be willing to contribute? And we give them a range. Now, originally, way back when, we were using variable numbers, and and the economists will tell you that's the proper way to do this question. It was getting too complicated, so we eventually just stayed on a fixed, uh, the fixed categories here of amount of pay, and then we eventually just discarded it. But the, the main thing wasn't so much to figure out how much people would be willing to pay. The main idea was to contrast the, uh, the amount people were willing to contribute to wetland fixing to something that they might be more invested in. So one of those things would be restoration. So here's same, just like wet, just like wetlands, we ask if people have heard of a restoration, name three restorations, etc. But then, so we have wetlands in some some cases and restorations in some cases, and then we have a parallel one here which says a toxic. So if there's a toxic dump site um, near your home. Uh, would you favor cleaning it up? And just about everybody says, yes, we should clean up a toxic dump site. But then we ask the same question in terms of how much money would you be willing to invest, right? And then this is this one is a, is a constructed answer. People, people didn't answer this. This is, this is a, a, a sort of analysis thing here. But the idea is um, people would most likely be more willing to pay money to clean up a toxic dump site that poses a direct threat to them than they would be for... Uh, say some random wetland thing, and so you can compare how much more people were willing to pay for a toxic uh, dump site cleanup than a wetland restoration or repair. Um, uh, yeah, and so these th these questions here are just um, ways of doing the analysis. Okay, then uh, we also for a while were asking if you saw a restoration story in the newspaper or on a website, would you be curious about reading it? Would you not care about it? And uh, and and uh, people answer that. Uh, this we only asked for uh, asked in one year, I think, or one or two years, and this was about the National Flood Insurance Program. 
And so we asked if people knew that, you know, what the status of it, it was, it's in deficit and, um, and who should pay for it. Should everybody pay for the national flood insurance? Should only people in, in coastal areas or flood zones pay for it, et cetera. And then we also asked, is, is flooding a major concern of yours? Yes, no, or unsure. We have a series of questions about protected areas. So we asked them uh, kind of like uh, the, the Channel Islands and, and that stuff. We asked, what was the last natural area visited? Again, this is one that needs a lot of cleaning and a lot of binning. But this is people, what people said. Some people said, you know, local parks. Some people said a beach. Some people said mountains. Some people said um, uh, uh, estuary. Others said very specific places um, and, and locations like Yosemite. Um, and then just like we asked about... Uh, uh, before about uh, visitation to uh, the islands. How often do people visit natural areas? How often do they visit national parks? Um, what do they think about the President Trump's, we don't say President Trump's, I don't think, but we just say the, the, the current effort to reduce national monuments broadly writ and, uh, and see what people think about that. We only asked this in one year, I believe, the year that it was being proposed, initially proposed. Uh, and then uh, these next ones are really interesting. I'm really curious. I have not looked at this too closely, but so we started getting some senses um, around the last presidential election and the run up to the last presidential election that some people were not feeling safe in parks, particularly folks that might, um, um, you know, have uh, questionable legal status or, or, or a whole variety of things. And so we asked if people feel safe now, uh, or we originally asked if they felt safe in parks, and then we modified that. Do you feel safe now versus essentially before the, the 2016 presidential election? And then we further modified that um, to, uh, to try to get a sense of, of where, uh, just again, more specificity. And so um, uh, how, how people felt in 2000, the year 2000, that was before 9-11, right, before the current era of of security penetrated and, and police started getting armed up the yin yang and, and such. Um, so uh, safe in parks and in open spaces in 2000, in 2015, and then the year the question was asked. So this last time was asked was in 2019. And so we can have a, a range of comparison there and see how this changes over time. Uh, this is a question we've asked every year or just about every year since we started. Um, and this is, uh, should our endangered species laws be eliminated, made less severe, expanded, etc.? cetera? Um, uh, this is a question that we uh, have expanded, uh, and this one is about plastic pollution. So, um, so have you heard about plastic pollution or plastic in people's water, in people's food, in beer, in air, in the ocean, et cetera? And then these questions, these spaces over here are actually um, some of our, our coding. So this is not people's responses. This is how um, how we might want to go about analyzing it. Just any any foods, um, et cetera. And then we did ask for a little while. We've asked if people had heard about the uh, Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Uh, and then we have a series of questions that um, just are about the coast in general. And so this is our, uh, again, our, one of our key questions that we ask, still ask every year, which is please rank the threats to the coast of these things. So one, two, three, four kind of thing. Uh, and then have people heard of these institutions? Uh, so these are, again, all real things except for um, the um, ones in red. The ones in red are made up. The ones in red are not uh, real, and these are used for um, estimating error. Um, the other thing to say is that some of these, the MMS, the Minerals Management Service, changed. It, it no longer exists. In the wake of the Deepwater Horizon, this entity was decommissioned, and it was broke, part of the interior, and it was broken up and split into these two, Bohm and Bessie. Um, okay. And then we ask, uh, we, for a while, we were asking about people's valuation of nature. And so what should go into the, how, what should factor into how we value nature? Beauty, ecology. Um, economics, the ability to recreate, rarity with, with endangered species, that kind of stuff. We asked how people generally feel about coastal governance. Are we doing, is our, is our government doing too much in the coastal zone? Are we quote unquote over-regulating? Are we not doing enough or do you not know? Uh, and then are we, are we doing generally good management of the coast? Yes, no, I don't know. Generally what we found with our polls is that if we ask people these general questions, are we doing a good job of managing the coast? People generally um, tend to be fairly negative. But then when we ask very specific things, what about this establishment of this park or this particular policy? People tend to be much more positive on the specifics. 
Um, California Ocean Health is, and this is just like this, management of the coast. This is California Ocean Health better than 50 years ago or, or not. How much money did people spend at the coast in the last seven days? So this question is, there's problems with this because most economics folks would want much more specificity and would do this in a different way. But this is useful primarily in, in broad strokes and to compare from year to year to year. So some people are, are conceiving of this as how much money they dug in their pocket and, and spent at a store. Other people factor in things like rent and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, there, there's large variances here, but... Um, but uh, uh, that that's that number again. There's there's a raw value that they responded, and this is our adjustment of it, where we we try to um, make sure it's consistent. The uh, coastal commission director was fired. This this qu these questions were asked in the wake of that. Was it good that we fired him? Basically for no cause. Uh, and then um, yes or no. And then we sort of modified that the next year into more of a, a positive to to negative score scale, I should say. Um, how about moving power plants off the beach, good or bad? How about cultivating marijuana? This is one that's not specifically, uh, another one of our few questions that isn't specifically coastal related, but because we do have so much marijuana cultivation in Santa Barbara County, Santa Barbara and Ventura, but especially Santa Barbara in the area around Carpinteria, this is, this is a relevant question, um, even though it might not seem to be, um, directly coastal, coastally related. Um, again, that, that question about Diablo Canyon closing, this is a, a different variant of the one you saw before. Um, uh, and then this is a really interesting one, or one that I think is particularly interesting. We only started ask, asking it in the last five years, but it's it's what's more, what it, what it has a bigger influence on our resources, nature, humans, or are they both having an equal uh, influence on, on uh, our resources? Coastal science, just a little bit about ecology. Again, how do people, how, what do people think ecology is? Environmentalism, people studying plants and animals, et cetera. Um, and then uh, at the same time, we're asking people's general sense of the motivation of scientists. This is trying to get at, do people really trust scientists or they, do they not trust scientists? And uh, you know, are, are, are scientists mostly objective? Are scientists mostly weird? Are they, they mostly do stuff that's only in their own interest? Are they trying to influence policy specifically, et cetera? And then we have a series of, of questions. We only ask sort of every other year or so. Would, this year would have been the year to ask it um, because of the pandemic, we're not gonna be able to do that. But, um, but the idea is, um, um, uh, and so this is, this is a bit complicated. Um, but, uh, and we, we probably need to talk about this later, but suffice it to say, we're asking about all these different management efforts and not all these questions are asked every year. Um, we, we've shrunk the list considerably to, to shorten the, the, the survey because it's, it was getting pretty long, but it's about, uh, cap and trade, uh, non-coastal dependent, um, uh, industries, um, uh, moving them out of the coastal zone, um, power plants located in the coastal zone, offshore drilling, et cetera. And so how this works is people are asked, it's, it's again, it's a scale. And so if people answer again, you, they get a one. And then, um, if they're unsure, um, they, uh, mark this as a, as a one. And this here is supposed to be, I believe blank. Uh, the score the negative to positive is reflected here as a as a value. Um, so this one, this person was very positive on it. This person was was somewhat negative on it. They va vary from minus two to plus two. And there's all these different categories. You guys can look through them. Um, uh, this one, Kelestra Songus, is about a bridge. This is a fake one. This isn't real. So when people, so again, we can use this as a standard uh, as a thing to help estimate error. It goes on for a while. Goes on for a while. Obviously, there's all these questions we've asked over the years. Uh, okay, and then some of these questions, some of these questions that are particularly interesting to us, we've asked in different forms, and you've seen this, and as they've shown up in some of the other uh, columns so far. But in this case, we've, we we switched beach beach nourishment in 15 and 17 to uh, these these scales of very negative to very positive, and the same with homeless folks on the beach. A uh, question about drones. This really comes from our drones class, but since we've been doing the survey, we've introduced this into this into this survey. And this is how familiar people are. Do people think it's it's a good idea to fly small, um, um, you know, personal unmanned aerial vehicles around? Yes, no. And then have have is the responder ever flown a drone themselves? 
maybe one time or a few times, or have they flown it many times? Um, so again, that, that's also not directly coastal dependent, but it, it helps us with some of our other surveys and our other courses. And then we get into the demographics questions. So uh, where did they get their news? Um, this is one that was split. So these categories just said the internet, and then after 2014, we split it from just internet, quote unquote. And so you'll notice these are bl this is blank because this wasn't an actual category. Instead, people in this year had these two options, which was, which was um, internet uh, news site or internet social media sites. Um, and then uh, this, and then uh, when, how do people tend to vote on um, environmental issues? Do they, are they consider themselves very conservative, very liberal, et cetera? Uh, how do people see our current economic system? Is rigged in favor of a few or is a, or is a fair system? Um, and and, and uh, some of these questions we ask because we're interested. Other ones like this are asked because other national polls are asking these questions. So it helps us sort of get a sense of are we, are we, are we similar to those, those national polls or are we quite different? Have you considered moving in the past year? We hear this a lot these days about how California is so expensive and people are just leaving in droves. It's not really happening. People are leaving, but people are also coming in. And so this is just a question of, uh, have you considered moving? Um, and then we only asked this one year, do you approve of the job Congress is doing? Which again is the same kind of thing a lot of the national political polls doing. These we also asked that same year and I think another year after that as well, but how do you think our then current governor was doing in, in, his, in his job and how was then President Trump doing? So this is, this is called um, uh, uh, approval rating. Again, those are just cloned from national polls um, just to help us get a sense of how similar our population is to the national uh, responses or, or, or other statewide responses. Uh, the zip code people lived at or, or, or live at, um, how many years they've been living at that zip code, which gives us a sense of are, are they relatively recent arrivals or have they been living here a long time. Uh, job, we've never really done anything with this, but you guys may well want to bin this and use that as, in your analyses. Year they were born and then their age. Uh, the age, again, obviously the year they took the survey. Um, household income, we've changed this a couple times as, as our numbers have gone up uh, over the 15 years of this poll or whatever it is. Um, and so we've added a couple columns to be more consistent with some other polls and also just because we want, we're afraid we're missing a lot of the wealthier folks we still we still could easily have like a you know a much larger categories but these these seem to capture a lot of our uh, population um, are you are you currently a voter do you identify as male female we have experimented in years past with trying some other uh, categories of gender for how people identify and virtually no one checks those so I think one year we try. One year we tried it of 13,000, 1,300 responses. I think we got two or three people that, or something like that, maybe four or five people that that were not either either male or female, um, or didn't identify as male or female. And so it it just didn't really make sense for us to keep using that um, those, those additional uh, categories when so few people would respond to them. Uh, education, uh, language, people speak at home. This is one where they can take multiple ones, English, Spanish, uh, or, or Russian or whatever the heck it is. And so people could obviously like this person here, both speaks English and Spanish at home. So that was the case where people can um, take more than one. And then we have, uh, comments. Um, uh, okay, cool. So that's basically it, you guys. And then if you, if you scroll down to the bottom, I'm sure you're going to want to redo all this yourself. But what I've done is, and there's there are clearly errors in here, but um, but I've done summary statistics here if you want to get just a, a quick and dirty look at what's going on. So if we look at um, some question, um, this and again it's not all correct, but this is this is all the responses. We have thirteen thousand six hundred and seventy three people over the years that gave us an answer to this question, and uh, so nine of those nine thousand seven hundred and ninety eight thought that beauty was one of the ways we should value nature. And then um, this is a percentage. So 72 of the total respondents, 72% of the people that responded to this question felt that this was an important thing to consider. Um, now, this because this is one of these questions that people could pick multiple, you know, could, could pick multiple things. Obviously, this one's 72, this one's 73, this one's 60, this one's 40, et cetera. And then this is broken down by year. Um, you know, there's there's uh, uh, the, these pr proportions total to more than one. Whereas most of our questions, 
which is something like this, right? This should not total to more than one. This should total to 100%, right? So this 0.36 is 36%, this 0.37 is 37%. And so, um, so of the 12,000, or excuse me, 1,289 people that responded to this question, uh, 458 said they feel, uh, in 2015, they feel very safe, which translates to 36% of the population that we surveyed. Uh, so that's it. So that's a quick overview of our, of our uh, opinion polls, opinion poll data. You guys have a look at this. Uh, you know, initially just play around and just see what the options are here before we start on any kind of um, manipulation. But but have a look at this, and I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks for doing this, this survey and, the, and, this, and, and this database from the survey. I think you guys have a great time. You can go in so many different directions, as you can see from these very uh, large lists, this large list of questions. So I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks a lot. See you soon.